together. We're going to tear down the Mountainside Bakery building and we'll put it there. So it'll be in the order of 13,000 square feet. We'll have uh, a bar, we'll have two food lines for cafeteria style pickup, and then an indoor dining hall. It'll be themed like a, a timber lodge. Yeah, we're, uh, we're looking forward to it as well. We're in the final phases of the concept design and we're moving on to the engineering end. We hope this is great ground here after Halloween. So the question was, is the park capacity still 60,000? So I think the 60,000 number is a, a number that's sort of floating around. Uh, the park doesn't release its official capacity numbers. Uh, but the capacity of the park has changed a little bit as we've grown uh, in the park. Uh, I don't know if any of you remember when we used to have Racing Rivers and before that, Pharaoh's Eye and, and Swing Siam. That plaza going down to Behemoth was added over the years. Uh, we also added the Zoom Zone Plaza uh, and, and other pockets in the park. So it has changed over the years. Does that answer your question? You got, you got one more? Yes, okay. one. Um, you know, when a, usually when a ride is removed, it's usually low ridership. I was always curious about Byron Curve because um, it seemed like it was still a popular ride. I'm not too sure if it was. Was there another reason why it was removed? Well, the question was about Baron Curve. Anybody remember the ride Baron Curve? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, it was placed in the park where Clockworks is now. And Clockworks used to be where Shockwave was. The question was, why was it removed? Was it solely because of ridership? Um, a decision to remove a ride is not one we take lightly, and we look at many factors. One of them is ridership, obviously. One of them is reliability and, and cost. How much does it take to maintain? Um, and another one is, do we need to make room for something else? When the decision was made to install Shockwave, we needed to find a room for that, and we felt that Clockworks was a more popular ride than Baron Curve, so we relocated Bar or, uh, Clockworks to the Baron Curve site and uh, we salvaged some parts to share with one of our sister parks that had the same ride at the time. Um, and then the rest of it went to, uh, to scrap. Okay. Okay, thank okay. you. I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> um, will we be expecting any more uh, bigger rides just in the future, bigger than Leviathan? Are you like looking into adding more bigger Rides so the question was, are we looking to add more rides for the future, any bigger rides for the bigger future? Bigger than Leviathan. Big, bigger than Leviathan. So I get asked this question at a lot of Q&As and, and my pat answer is stay tuned. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, can't, I can't comment on the future, unfortunately, or, or what, what the future holds for the park. Um, part of our marketing strategy is to hold those secrets tight and uh, reveal them when the time is right. So. Um, and yeah. last but not least, um, how is Halloween Haunt and Winterfest going to affect with uh, the masks and everything? For so, question was about COVID protocols during uh, Halloween Haunt and Winterfest. So, under the current guidance from uh, the Public Health Authority, um, which is the York Region Public Health Department, um, we are still required to maintain social distancing and masks where you can't maintain social distancing. So in ride queue lines or on rides, masks are still going to be required, unless something changes. If all of a sudden we get to 90% vaccination rate, Doug Ford sticks to his word and says that uh, measures will be relaxed, then obviously we will relax our measures, but that hasn't, been, uh, hasn't happened yet, unfortunately. So for both of those events, um, the current protocols will remain, unless something changes in in society. Next question is right here. Um, can you share with us any details about what's going to be happening with the action theater building? Okay, sure, we'll go in this order. Quick, the next This question was about the action theater building. Um, it's the old um, iWorks Turbo Tour theater building where we had Days of Thunder and SpongeBob and all of that. And what are the plans for the future? So uh, I'll go back to my earlier answer about the future and that's wait and see. Um, I can't comment on the future, uh, future projects or, or what, what the future may hold. Uh, things are constantly changing and uh, while we have some, uh, some plans for that building, I can't ensure what those are. It's currently one side, it's a haunt, right? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, that brings me, I should comment on the Halloween haunt. So any of our indoor attractions for haunt will not be operating, obviously, because we, we can't accommodate those mass crowds indoors. So we're modifying our program this year to expand the scare zones in the park. And you've probably seen some of that coming out now. We have a fairly short window to get that stuff out in the park. And we've been going, going hard and fast to, to try and get it ready. So. All right, next question right here. Yeah. All right. Um, so my question is, uh, Canada's Wonderland, we have a lot of roller coasters, obviously. We have 17 of them, a lot more than many other parks. We have a lot of flat rides, a lot of really unique rides, too. But Canada's Wonderland has, obviously, you know, a very high attendance every year. Um, and a lot of the rides that we have, not just the older rides, but it seems like some of the newer rides, including the flat rides, tend to have fairly low capacities. And that's affected wait times and, you know, Feeling like you need to get a fast lane in order to, you know, be able to have an enjoyable day when it's busy. So, does Canada's Wonderland, when they're planning to put new attractions or new uh, experiences in, consider the impact that capacity of that attraction will have in ensuring that um, there's enough capacity for people in the park? So, the last question was regarding new attractions and capacities and how we um, accommodate large crowds when we add new, new attractions. When we choose a new attraction, there's several elements that go into that. What, what's our target audience? Is it families? Is it teens? Is it uh, young kids? Um, we, we try and satisfy a, a diverse group of customers, obviously. So that's one thing. The next thing is the cost. You know, how much money do we have to spend? Obviously, we didn't uh, have a full operating season this year. We're not planning to add any rides next year. Um, we're we're going to do the restaurant and, and try and reduce uh, um, our wait times in the, in the food areas because we all feel like we're underserved on the food side of the park compared to some other parks. Yeah. Um, so, unfortunately, we can't build everything to satisfy everyone. Um, the, we have an old saying that, that comes around that we don't build the church parking lot for Easter Sunday. Um, we have a lot of Easter Sundays in the park here on, through the summer. Uh, the last three weeks of August is our, our peak season, and many of you avoid that season, I'm sure, just for that reason. Um, so while we do try and satisfy the need for high capacity rides, it's not always possible. So uh, I can say we try our best, uh, but we also have other thing, other elements to satisfy, whether they be cost or target audience as well. So. Okay, next question is, okay, great. Yep, great. Maybe a dumb question, but are you guys implementing vaccine passes? Verifying that? Uh, sorry, show and prove the vaccines or no? So the question was, is Canada's Wonderland implementing a vaccine passport uh, requirement or vaccine certification requirement? At this time, no. I can't say what the future will hold. Uh, public health may change their requirements for that. I know that when the indoor dining rules change this week, next weekend you will need to show proof of vaccination to enter an indoor dining space in the park. So that'll be uh, Backlot Cafe or Marketplace. Currently, Coasters Restaurant is a takeout only at this point. So. So the question was regarding the planned hotel. So back in 2016, 17, something like that, we had started plans to build that hotel down at the corner of Rutherford Road and 400. That project has been put on hold. As far as I know, it's indefinitely at this time, so there are no plans to revive it at this point. While all the architectural and engineering is complete, the zoning changes are complete, that project could be picked up pretty quickly and easily and put into uh, construction. But at this time, it's on hold. So. All right, next question. Uh, is it true that because of government restrictions, Canada's Wonderland is unable to get an RMC poster? The question was, because of uh, government regulations or restrictions, Canada's Wonderland is uh, not permitted or, or allowed to have an RMC coaster. Well, the, the Ontario government, the TSSA, which is the regulatory agency that oversees the okay, devices in the province, they don't have any uh, restrictions regarding what type of attraction is installed. The only restriction that they have is regarding bungee jumps in the province. All other uh, attraction types are permitted, as far as I know, in the province. And RMC coasters would be one of those. So there's no restriction against it. It could be, could be pursued. Okay. Uh, next question. Uh, is there any 
right over here. Um, first of all, why are you sitting near the ice cream? I can see you back there. <laughs> what are you doing? Guarding it. I'm guarding it. Um, the, the, yes, I am. Yeah. I will ask you question. Yeah, it's either me or Luke. The question we have over here uh, that five of us were wondering is, will the new dining hall have a stage? And entry like yeah, like some of the bigger ones and other are, you know the parks do have. So the question was the new restaurant for next year, will it have an entertainment element or venue or stage inside the building? At this time, we're not considering a permanent um, stage feature in the building. The intent is to make it multifunction so that we can change it for um, a group uh, function or we can change it for a Halloween event or a Christmas uh, setup. Um, so we will have infrastructure in the building to accommodate entertainment, but we're not going to have a full-blown stage, green room, and, and lighting. And no, yeah, or no, just no. something for some sort of entertainment. entertainment. Exactly. And, and we'll be able to accommodate that indoors or outdoors. Okay, cool. <laughs> okay next question over here. Oh. What do we think we're going to do different for this winter fest this year season compared to last season? Like, is it different rides open this year? Or um, anything going to be different? <laughs> question was about Winterfest and any changes for Winterfest for this year. So we are considering some changes. They haven't been confirmed yet, so unfortunately I can't talk about them. <laughs> We're looking to try and grow the footprint, but that hasn't been uh, confirmed yet. Uh, when we grow the footprint, that means we may be able to add a ride or two or another building or two. So. Um, I don't, I don't want to say that that's what we're doing until it's confirmed, unfortunately. So. Okay, uh, next question right here. Uh, to what extent does Canada's Wonderland like have its own personnel maintaining its rides versus having, let's say, the manufacturer come out and maintain its rides? The question was about maintaining the ride equipment in the park and what percentage of the equipment is maintained by in-park personnel versus uh, manufacturers. We maintain the rides, uh, I would say 100%. Uh, we don't rely on manufacturers for any of that uh, maintenance. Uh, while they do support us on the engineering side, if we need to make a modification or an improvement, obviously we go through them to assist us in that, um, but all of the maintenance is done on site. There are some things that we do send off site to be uh, perhaps sandblasted or, uh, or, or dipped uh, for repainting, but uh, we do that with lots of different things. Okay, next question, Cameron. Uh, so I know the park has been doing a lot of repainting some of the rides in terms of bringing back original names or paying homage to original areas of the park. Are there plans to continue doing that in the future? So this was another question about the future. <laughs> 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 in terms of just like bringing back like names of like original rides or so the question was about uh, potential for bringing back uh, classic names or, or original vintage names of, of some of the rides. While that may be possible, I, I can't say whether that will happen or not. I, I can imagine it will at some point, but um, we'll have to wait and see. Alright, next question right here. Yeah, so uh, my question was, uh, uh, so in recent years, uh, Vekoma has introduced these uh, new trains where instead of over-the-shoulder trains, it's is, has Park ever considered replacing the trains on flight deck with the Vessels train trains? <laughs> Please say yes! <laughs> so, the question was regarding uh, flight deck and the Vacoma uh, new style trains. Um, will Wonderland ever consider that? So it's kind of a question about the future and I, you know my answer on that. But all kidding aside, we, we have explored those options with Vacoma and other vendors. Um, so that is something that we do have um, on, a, on a burner, on a back burner, um, and one day that may happen, but okay. <laughs> have to wait and see, I guess. <laughs> does uh, anyone have a DeLorean? Does, does, does anybody have a DeLorean? Yeah, does anybody have a time travel DeLorean <laughs> or another? Yeah, uh, but, <laughs> I don't but, but yeah, I, I can't comment on the future because we don't have any plans for it at this time, but it is something I'd like to see the park do at some point. So. Me too. Flight deck does suck, I'm sorry. <laughs> It's not for everybody, I understand that. The shorter you are, the harder it is on your head. Yes, it's a head maker. So, next question is up here, and before I go back to the people who've already asked, is there anybody who's not asked a question yet who wants to jump in the queue at this time? Cool. Ken, go ahead. 
Um, this is not about the future. <laughs> it's about the past. You brought up three very awesome ride parts out of the depths of the basement to go into the little museum store there. Are those that all that survive of the original ones that were in the basement that we saw ten years ago, or are those just the ones that did? The, when we when we got the full tour of the mountain ten years ago, um, we saw the character carousel down there, and at the time it was either well, you know, the the main body of the carousel is gone, but we kept all the ride parts. We don't know why we didn't, we didn't crush them, but they're still here. Three of them survived up here that were brought out, which is I, I love. It. I think it's fantastic to see that. Are the rest of them still in existence? So the question was about the the original character car or the um, the Hanna Barbera go round. Do you remember that name? Um, the characters on that ride do they do they all still exist? And they do. They're all the rest of them are still in the mountain. Uh, we don't have a, a plan for them right now. Um, I'm glad that we held on to them for the museum um, or the it's not a museum but a. 40th anniversary store, I guess. It's, easy. Yeah. Yeah. it's, it's a great, it's a great little display. We're yeah. out checking out. We climbed in the trolley and you know got on Scooby, which yeah. is fantastic. I think you guys did a great, great job with the wall. Gold West one has kids. That yeah. was a treat. Nice. So, but I know I didn't know if those were all that were kept or if you know, they were still they, the others still survived. So that's that's good to hear. Yeah. No, that's they're all still there, right? In hindsight, I wish we'd held on to more things like that to, uh, to be able to put on display at times. Um, and, and with that in mind, maybe we'll do that for the future. If any, Anything else comes out of it? So. Um, I do have one more first timer right over here. Okay. Um, is there anything that kind of happened in Wonderland's past that, if, like, that you was I don't know the word, but like you would personally go back on, almost something we wish we'd done yeah. differently? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, question was: Is there anything in Wonderland's past that that we wish we'd done differently? And over 40 years, there's lots of experiments, there's lots of things that have been tried, and I like to think that all the things that you do, either as a person or as a company, help make you what you are now. Um, so whether good or bad, they take you along the path to where you are now. Um, so I don't, I don't have any regrets. I, I consider them learning experiences, and uh, you only get stronger through your, through your learning experiences, either as a company or as an individual. So I hope that. I don't have one as a, an example for it, unfortunately. That's okay, fair enough. Okay, we're going to take Aldo and then Brendan, and then we might have time for one more. Okay. We'll see how many are my local Sure, ask you. Okay. <laughs> Peter, um, the last event that Ace had here, you mentioned that um, um, you were supposed to get another ride that fell through, and you went with Soaring Timbers. Are you able to share with us the ride that didn't come, or is that confidential? I can remember it. Oh. There was one. So confidentially. Well, <laughs> <laughs> the question was, uh, when Soaring Timbers came in, it was a, it was a late, uh, late decision, and we needed to, to get it in. Um, and I've drawn a blank, although sorry, I can't remember what, what it was. Uh, but we, 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 had, we had to react and we put in what we could, so. Um, good about it, I guess. That's okay, no problem. Uh, next question. Before Speed City Raceway was built, um, it looked like there was a, a helicopter launch pad in that area. Is that what it was? Question was about the location of Speed City Raceway and the park's early days before Speed City Raceway, there was a, a helipad there. Um, when the park was built, the park was built in a remote, I shouldn't say remote, it was in, a, in, a, in an area of the, the, in the farmer's field. It was, it was far, far from, from the city center. The nearest hospital was over in Richmond Hill. Um, the, uh, the nearest restaurant outside the park was on the highway. Um, but um, there was a helipad, it, it was a functioning oh, helipad, right. yeah. Um, and that dignitaries would come on occasion and land their helicopter. Is that, like, do you still have that somewhere in the park or is that gone? No, no, there's no, there's, there's no helicopter landing site. I mean, the, the guest parking lot could be modified if there was an emergency we needed to land a, uh, an orange air aircraft. That, that could happen in that space, but yeah, there's no permanent helicopter on the property. Okay. Are we out of time? 
for uh, you. I, I just want to make sure I get you yeah. a few more. Go ahead. Okay. Um, Brendan? All right, I have two questions that you probably may not be able to answer. The first one is fireworks in 2022 is going to happen with them um, because of the new restaurant. And then the second one is about has park explored themed music for themed sections of the park? Okay, there was two questions. The first one was about fireworks for 2022. The plan is to have fireworks again in 2022 on the long, the long weekend, either the holiday or the Sunday night, Victoria Day uh, or Labor Day. I guess it's Victoria Day, Labor Day, Simcoe holiday, and uh, Canada Day, of course. Yeah. So that that will remain. The show may change. Um, the square footage on the, on that hillside is going to get smaller. It's not going to be gone, but it will be smaller. So some of those elements will change. The show hasn't been rewritten uh, with that in mind yet, but that is the plan to bring the show back. Now, if COVID is still here, hopefully it's not. Um, I can't say whether the fireworks will continue if we're still in, in a COVID uh, precautionary uh, condition. The other question was about themed music uh, in the themed areas of the park. Um, I don't have an answer for that, unfortunately. I don't know. Um, there. When the park was new, there were, was themed music in the themed areas, and through the Paramount years, that sort of went away. Um, we, we tried to cater to uh, the masses with popular music, um, good or bad, and um, I imagine we're going to stay with that course for now. But. Kudos for the All Canada playlist on the, when you guys reopened. Yes. Okay. Yes, we noticed nice. that. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Okay, okay uh, time, but possibly last. Possibly less? Or we two? Okay, we'll take one more after this then. Okay. Uh, so, right up here, Luke. Okay. Um, not a question. I just wanted to uh, extend my gratitude and thanks to you and your team for doing just an amazing job on keeping our rides in tip top shape. Um, some rides are running like they've never run since they were first installed. Like Vortex is flying this year. Like everything is just top notch. And I just wanted to extend my thanks and everyone else who's been enjoying the rides. Like we really <laughs> Thank you. All right, and last question right here. Okay, um, so talking about food, great food, excellent food. Um, when it comes to food, it's been a pro I think a lot of people will agree that for various reasons, food lines have been pretty long. Uh, with the new Army Hall or restaurant or what it, whatever it's going to be called coming in next year, and um, is it having the app available? Uh, and also, I, I believe Cedar Fair is going to be going cash free next year. If that affects Canada's Wonderland, uh, yes or no? Um, but is, has there been consideration against the question of the future about moving towards? mobile ordering for food using uh, the cell phone using the app. Because that's one thing that I think is a big hole in the, the food service experience here. So the question was about uh, speed of service at our food locations. Um, first part of the question was um, increasing capacity. And while we, we get a lot of um, comments on increasing number of POS stations or mobile app, what our biggest um, hurdle right now is our capacity. We don't have enough production capacity in the food units to produce the food fast enough to get it out onto the onto the uh, counter to get it into your hands. So by adding more point of sale locations or mobile pickup, all we're doing is creating a bigger line. So we need to increase our kitchen capacity to get the food out, especially during the lunch rush and the dinner rush. So that is our goal over the next several years, is to increase that capacity and, and try and get the food produced faster so that the wait times are, are not as long. Some parks have gone down the road of adding mobile, mobile ordering under the guise of you can get your food faster, but if the kitchen doesn't grow to keep up, all you're doing is putting more people in queue. So we've decided not to go the mobile order route yet until we can get our capacity up. And then once we get our capacity up, then we can offer more points of sale, whether it's mobile or, or counter service. Does that make sense? All right, good answer. Cool. Thanks. All right, that's it. All right, that's all uh, we're going to do. If you have any other questions, I'll stick around here for a few more minutes. You can come on up. Okay, thanks, everyone. All right. <laughs>